I'm a giant Children of Bodom fan. And when I listened to these songs the first time, I was like, oh my God, like this is the best stuff I've heard, I think since Hate Crew. Where did these songs come from? It sounds like it could have come from like way back in the, the early days of, of Bodom, you know? Well, they came from Alexi. He often said that uh, with the new lineup, he felt that he's like 20 years younger now and he has a new energy, but uh, I guess it shows, shows now. I saw in another interview you did that you were saying when Alexi was in the studio, he seemed normal, like everything seemed totally fine. And as usual, of course, you were in Children of Bodom with him for a number of years. Um, how can you compare, you know, his energy in the studio to uh, the prior Children of Bodom album? It was pretty much the same. We didn't like uh, always be in the studio at the same time. But uh, yeah, he was doing his work like he did in Hexed album. But I, I do think that uh, these songs are Alexi at his best. I would put them like um, right somewhere after Hate Crew Death Row. Yeah, I totally agree. They do have a like sort of a Hate Crew type of vibe in my opinion. Uh, yeah, but there's also like a vibe from Hate Breeder to me, especially mm -hmm. that Paint the Sky with the Blood starting with a blast beat. Mm -hmm. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of Warheart. <laughs> For a three song EP, it's a pretty powerful piece of music. That dissection cover fits in so perfectly at the end. And of course, Alexi's style uh, complements the, the very unique style of dissection as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel the same way that uh, that dissection cover fits so well to the two original songs that that could be even our original song. If you compare it, compare it, that song to like COB slow songs like Every Time I Die or Angels Don't Kill, they, it's got some, some similar vibe on it. A lot of Alexi's lyrics, especially in the latter part of uh, Children of Bodom's career, a lot of them sort of read as a cry for help. Like a lot of the times he would talk about his own troubles, his own sadness. This new crop of songs, they're a lot more like fun, actually. Do you think that was a representation of where the band was? Like having fun? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. Because, yeah, we had a good chemistry and we had a fun in and outside the stage or rehearsal room. We hang a lot, a lot of, you know, at our downtime. Yeah, totally. I hope that it, it kind of shows that, or you can hear it from the record. Obviously the future of Bodom After Midnight can only be so much because uh, Alexi is no longer with us. Um, what comes next for the guys? What comes next for you? Well, unfortunately, the Bodom After Midnight as a band, as an active band is pretty much gonna be buried with Alexi. We don't really, feel comfortable, wouldn't feel comfortable to use name Bodom without Alexi because it's so connected to him. Sure. Obviously. And uh, yeah, what happens, I think, you know, Mitya has a new project. Walter is gonna continue with uh, Paradise Lost. I have something coming out, but uh, I'm just not ready to announce it yet. But uh, I got definitely something to looking forward to and I'm gonna, continue in the music industry, hopefully a long time. When it comes to Alexi's legacy, what do you think, or rather, what do you hope fans will take away from his great body of work, uh, from this new record, and just, you know, how he was, in my opinion, sort of the Randy Rhodes of his generation? Well, obviously he left us uh, great songs, great, records with uh, great guitar playing. And yeah, that will be his legacy, I guess. And he created a completely new style, in my opinion, how he uh, combined uh, black metal, glam rock, death metal, whatever metal, <laughs> basically. Do you have a favorite memory with Alexi, either on stage or in the studio? Mm, well, 
what I've been saying a lot that I like to think that the whole time I got to work with him is a one big memory. When I saw him last time, that's the memory that I have in my mind right now. That was a good, good, uh, good last chat with him. Yeah, that was after the music video shooting. And he seemed to be very happy and uh, very excited about the future. I'm, I'm really happy that uh, the songs he wrote and record are gonna be released. And now the one song is already been released. So, cause he was really, couldn't wait to get those out. Yeah, and it shows the quality of the song speaks for itself, absolutely. Uh, yeah. when, when was that video recorded? Uh, December, 2020. Oh, wow. I think it was like uh, nine or 10 days before he's passing. Well, I'm so thankful that we got to have that video with them. I'm so thankful that we got this. Me too. Old songs. Because like, as I said, I know I keep saying it, but the songs are some of the best of his career, I think. I feel like almost, you know, these are some beautiful swan songs for him. Would you say that? Would you say that too? Yeah, absolutely. You're 100% right. Yeah, these are like a, he's going out with a band. They show that he's, he was still top of his game. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate you giving me your, your time and your energy. April 23rd is when you can grab the new EP from Bodom After Midnight. Make sure you grab it because it's essential listening for all fans, Bodom and Alexi Lyo. And thank you again, man. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. It was uh, nice to chat with you.